is going on, everybody? And welcome to another edition of World's Finest, brought to you by the Comic Collectors Guild. Coming to you today from a galaxy far, far away. My name is Jake. You guys know me as the Superman and coming from Gotham City. But it looks like the Death Star today, uh, we got Lando Lee Lawson, a.k.a. the Batman. How are you, sir? I'm great, my friend. Great. How are you doing today? I'm good. Uh, we are looking forward to talking about a very exciting topic today, and we're going to be covering Star Wars, uh, probably the most iconic and most important franchise in cinema history. Um, all the franchises really today kind of owe a debt of gratitude to Star Wars. So what we're going to do is rank all 11 films. That is the nine Skywalker saga films, Solo and Rogue One. We're going to rank them number 11 down to number one and find out just who our favorite Star Wars film uh, currently is. Um, Lee, where does uh, Star Wars uh, rank for you amongst all these amazing fandoms that uh, you and I are big fans of? Well, for me, it probably started the whole thing. I mean, uh, you know, I, I kicked off this whole love of sci-fi for me. Uh, I saw Star Wars from my age here, but I saw, saw New Hope in the theaters, and I loved it. I fell in love with it. The the characters that they created. I mean, we're going 40 years now, 40 plus years, and you know, George Lucas put these characters out in the pop culture, and they have endured. Endured. It is a they're, they're fantastic characters. I love the whole universe. And to your point, it is one of the most fantastic franchises out there. With it, I don't think we would have the DC or Marvel franchise to show that these type of movies can endure and people care about these long form stories. You know, yep. um, the DC, Marvel, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, I think all of them owe a debt of gratitude to Star Wars. Oh, yeah. And what a unique world it is. I mean, it's not even from the similar thing like Star Trek. It's very, very different. It's kind of yes. a unique little adventure. It's fun. And uh, that's why we love it so much. Uh, before we get into the countdown, I was curious. I don't think I've ever asked you this. Do you have like a favorite or maybe one or two favorite characters of in Star Wars, whether it's new or original uh, trilogy? Yeah, well, easy answer is Chewbacca. I mean, I, I fell in love with Chewba old Chewie. As How could a kid, you not love Chewie? You no, know? but I also think it had a lot to do with me as a, a, a kid, a young kid, you know, a young uh, late teenager seeing that film for the first time. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> no, but uh, it just the, the type of character that it was. I mean, for me as a kid seeing that, again, this exploded you know created the special effects put them all on the map of where they are where we are today without that yeah. we'd have nothing so to see that as a kid and to not have any seen anything like it before you know nowadays kids go see movies uh it's not really anything that's going to blow them away with this yeah. the, the world that's created and right. they're on the big screen while this right. in a lot of ways was the first one as, as we've stated and you know so it's chewbacca sorry for the long drawn answer but it's chewbacca for me Yep, for me, it is uh, close probably between Anakin and Obi-Wan. Uh, I love the Ewan McGregor version uh, in particular. I, I love those two. Uh, and then, you know, who doesn't love a good bad? And uh, I would say any of these three guys behind me here, uh, they, they're worthy of any list. But uh, those are my favorite. Um, unfortunately, you know, there are 11 films. They are all incredible in their own ways. But somebody does have to come in last. Uh, so I'm curious, Lee, who came in at the number 11 spot for you in the Star Wars ranking? Well, you were absolutely right. Someone has to come in last. And this film worked extremely hard in order to make, <laughs> to, you know, they deserve uh, their place on this list, in my opinion. And it's The Phantom Menace. Uh, it's just a terrible movie to me, uh, especially having to wait, what, uh, I believe it was like 16 years in between Return of the Jedi and this. Uh, and this is what we got. It's so disappointing. Very slow moving. Um, when I very first heard about this film, uh, well, when, the, when I first heard about the film, I was like, oh, this is great. I can't believe it. I didn't know it was a prequel at the time. I was like, going to continue the stories of Han, Luke, and Leia. But then I hear that we're doing an origin story of Anakin. Okay, that's cool. Had no idea it was going to start off when he was an eight to ten year, eight to ten year old kid. You know, um, he, he did it. Nothing against poor Jake Lloyd, he played him, but he did a terrible job as Anakin. You know, uh, another character that was introduced into this world, Jar Jar Binks. Lisa Dink, I can't stand him. Uh, you know, I just really couldn't. <laughs> and speaking of him, there was a whole lot of weird. Uh, 
racial stereotypes of this film, starting with him, and then the Nimodians, I believe they were, with the Asian accents, you know, yeah. that, that, that kind of were really starting to be the bad guys of, of Phantom Menace. Uh, the mystery plot of the film, it just really lacked direction to me. Uh, the whole mess of the midichlorians and how the Jedis, are, how they create Jedi and all that, it just, I didn't, it came out of nowhere, and I didn't care. I didn't care, uh, visually, of course, George Lucas always astounds with the special effects and takes them to places where they haven't gone before, you know, effects-wise. Uh, so the pod race was one thing that stood out. It was incredibly, it was incredibly well done visually, but I, as, a, as a whole, I just didn't care again. You know what I mean? Um, there was some fantastic things about it. Uh, Obi-Wan, his portrayal, or Ewan McGregor's portrayal is Obi-Wan. Fantastic, and I cannot wait to see what he does with the character in the new series coming to Disney Plus. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, Qui Gon Jinn, Liam Neeson's character was fantastic. You know, he did a great job uh, portraying him as well. Darth Maul, another great character introduced, um, but I, he's so he's a positive for me. But the negative is introduced. I'm thinking he's going to be this main bad, kind of like Vader was throughout the films, you know, but uh, alas, what happens, he dies at the end. And they didn't really ever do anything. They tease him throughout the whole film. Then he gets this awesome battle scene with, with Qui-Gon and uh, Obi-Wan at the end. But then he dies and, and there's nothing else that happens. So that was a big letdown. So all those reasons, my friend, is why it's number 11 on my list. Fair enough. Uh, for me, um, I know a lot of people with Phantom Menace is at the bottom of their list. For me, it is solo. Um, I, it's not a bad film. It's actually more enjoyable than I thought it was going to be. But who was asking for, for a solo film? Um, a young Han Solo movie. We had just come off of Force Awakens with Harrison Ford as Han Solo. So to try and wrap your head around somebody else playing him is hard enough. But when you just get Harrison Ford playing Han Solo and then try to adjust your brain to it, it just didn't work for me. The guy actually did a pretty admirable job of playing him. Um, I just wasn't invested. I mean, there are probably even some movies that are coming that I didn't even enjoy as much as Solo, but I was still invested in them because they played a part in the story. Uh, there were characters that I cared about, and young Han Solo just didn't do it for me. Your boy Chewie brought it up. You know, I love seeing how they met. Um, seeing Chewie kind of in his full force was, was really cool. Um, so everything with Chewie related to it, I loved. I loved Lando. Um, you know, Donald Glover did a great job as young Lando, uh, not a great symbol, but a good Lando, but, uh, it just was a movie I cared about. You know, I think it could be a cool Disney, Disney plus idea, but I don't know who thought it would be such a great idea to do a young Han Solo movie and think the flocks of people wanted to go see it. So for that reason, it had to come in at number 11 for me. So I understand all great reasons, man. Yep. Uh, we're going to start the top 10 now and, uh, number 10 moving on for you, um, who comes in at that runner up of the dumpster, uh, for you is <laughs> this list. Well, to keep an order of the prequel trilogy, I shall go with <laughs> number 10 for me as Attack of the Clones. Um, movie starts extremely slow after like there's a quick chase scene, I think at the beginning of the film, but then after that, it comes to a grinding yeah. Uh, there's a lot of exposition with the characters. I believe they've been away from each other for like a, a, at least a decade here in the film. Um, so they had to get reacquainted or so. And that was just, it, you know, just slow, it's really slow moving, as I said. You know, up until now, um, the Star Wars movies before The Phantom Menace, uh, these movies were supposed to really give you an adrenaline rush. You know, you're supposed to walk out of yeah. the theater and you want to be that swashbuckler like Han and the Jedi Knight like right. Luke, or even the evil empire, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like Darth Vader. Something, you're supposed to feel something. And, and, and with these, it was just, you felt boredom, <laughs> you yeah. know, with these two films. Um, uh, you know, the negative uh, with, uh, again, I've been on the negative, but Hayden Christensen is Anakin. You know, he did a better job as Jake uh, Lloyd, a better job than Jake Lloyd. I guess it's not really fair to compare the two actors, you know, Jake being a child and, and Hayden being where he was in his acting stage. But you know, it came off as wooden. His acting did. It came off as really wooden, came off as bratty. You know, Padma, Padme and uh, Anakin are supposed to be this love story for the ages, you know, but you never see that or feel that in the movie. You just right. don't. So to me, it was just another letdown. So positives, of course, you had the, Yoda finally going beast mode. Oh, yeah. Was fantastic. That was great. I'll watch that scene over again and again. Um, so that was great. Another great aspect, far less Jar Jar. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> yeah. So, so that's 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 why all those things taken into consideration. That's why it's number ten on my list. Yep, picking back, it's not, uh, number ten for me as well. Attack of the Clones. Uh, to what you touched on, I agree with all of it. The the positives, the gladiator pit scene at the end with all the Jedi, that was really cool. Seeing Yoda bring his lightsaber out after all these years was awesome. Um, the negatives for me is, you know, your. I thought Phantom Menace did one thing it did incredibly is you have to try and find a big bad that is as engaging to the audience as Darth Vader, who is all, you know, arguably the greatest villain in the history of cinema. And then we get Darth Maul who pulls it off and everyone's like, Oh, this guy's great. And you kill him. Uh, so but when Tag of the Clones, we get Dooku and General Grievous and they just did not hold up to the same kind of weight as Darth Maul, Darth Vader, um, so the big bad element was, and you know, we didn't really get Palpatine as the emperor yet. So there was a kind of a lack of a big bad, uh, as you mentioned, Padme and Anakin, that whole relationship was kind of awkward. Uh, just the general idea. She's like way older than him. And you know, the whole, just idea is just like, I wouldn't see how that would really happen. So I don't know why they went that route, but, um, so yeah, the, the, the writing wasn't very good. It was just a very boring film. Um, it, to me, it's pretty leaps and bounds under the rest of the films that are, you know, ahead. Uh, but I agree. Number 10, Attack of the Clones. Don't want to touch on it. Let's move on to number nine. Uh, number nine for you. Who we got? Uh, for me, another slow moving film in the Star Wars franchise here. Uh, but Last Jedi, you know, um, right off the bat, within this loop was a travesty. You know, we wait well, first, you, you wait for however many years in between Return of the Jedi and, and, and Force Awakens. And then when you first hear they're being, these guys are being cast with the original characters, you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, you're so excited. Then you come in, you get a little bit of Han. You get a lot of Han. You get a little bit of Leia. You get oh, just a glimpse of Luke. And you wait all Luke. that. Yeah, just a finger of Luke. And then you get all that time between uh, Attack of the, or I'm sorry, um, Force Awakens and Last Jedi just to be so disappointed with the character of Luke that yeah. point in time i totally was uh you know he's he's hiding out for all those years while his sister leia is carrying on the good fight all by herself you know um the, the whole casino mission with finn it, it was just a big waste of time and then why cast wendell and christie obviously we all know her from brand of tarth from uh, game of thrones oh, yeah. why cast her and that was a that was exciting casting everybody was excited yeah. to see her and then she played general phasma and she has some brief appearances you don't really see her face that, i mean that's neither here nor there but you don't get to see her and then she has such little screen time and character development in both films you know force awakens before last jedi and then yep. it happens toward Last Jedi. It's like, what? You know, it's just, it's just a whole lot of, just a whole lot of nothing is going on for me in that film. And again, do I like the film? As you stated beforehand, there's something about these movies that I'll always love and, and hold, hold yep. me about every single one on this list. But Last Jedi is number nine. It's, really it's uh, oh. my number nine too. We're moving right into it. Same thing. Uh, bravo to Ryan Johnson for trying new things and turn it on its head and you know give us something that we wouldn't expect so i i can respect that but you do not touch luke skywalker the handling of what they did with him is i i, I hated it i hated it um i thought they were gonna redeem it at the end i was so pumped when he's walking out and your lights the lightsaber and then to find out he's projecting himself and uh, there's no lightsabers even going to clash. It was so disappointing. Yes. Um, so just that alone brings it way down. Uh, the whole Finn was a great character in Force Awakens. He's got great humor, and they just completely took him out of the, the whole side mission. Was stupid. Um, you yeah. know, I hated what they did with his character. Um, Kylo Ren pulls the weight to me in this film. I thought he was fantastic, and you know the back and forth. Uh, again, you, you kill Snoke in like five minutes into the film when you establish that you think he's like the new emperor and you see his power and, you know, to have him die so quickly, I, I wasn't a fan of that at all. Yeah. Um, there are some good qualities. I mean, you know, just seeing Luke on screen for a change is cool. Uh, seeing Leia use the force to get herself back when she gets sucked into space was very, very cool. And that's cool. kind of a homage they did for her because she had just passed you know, when it came out. So uh, that was really good. But for me, same as you, what you said, they just tried a little too much. And uh, I just didn't like the, the risks that they took. It just didn't pay off for me. 
You agree? Yep. You agree. So uh, we're going to move right to number eight. Uh, who is number eight on the all-time Star Wars list? Uh, number eight is a movie you just spoke about not too long ago, and it is Solo. Uh, I will just jump on that bandwagon and say no one asked for this film. If you are going to recast a beloved character like Han Solo, then for me, let me see what happens with, and you asked me the question earlier, and Chewbacca is definitely the character that I fell in love with first as a kid. Yeah. But I mean, uh, my my favorite characters are that whole little grouping of characters. Yeah. yeah. Han, Luke, Leia, Lando, and Chewie. I'll include him in that too. Yeah. That's the, the camaraderie and uh, the group, the teamwork that they all showed and the love that they had for each other. Um, and, you know, it, it was that, to me, those, those were fun, fun characters. I want to see the continuation if you're going to recast and do another story about them, do it between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. Yeah. Then I will be there. You know what right. I mean? You can gripe, uh, uh, you know, and even use Alden uh, Ehrenreich. Yeah, he's fine. He played Han. He did, you know, he did with, with, with what he could. You know, you mentioned that the the, uh, the change in directors, you know, I, I, originally it was uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, I believe, yeah. who were the two directors that were supposed to be there. Yeah. And I guess they were taking things into more of a comedy route um, from what I've read. Now, but then you hire these guys, you kind of know what you're going to get, right? They did the, the Jump Street film. That's what they're from, yeah. Yeah, you did the Lego movie and, you know, uh, Hot of the Chance of Meatballs, all those funny, funny films. So, uh, you know, then replacing him with Ron Howard. Ron Howard, again, a great director, but I think it was just too many uh, hands in the pot or whatever it is to call yeah. it, you know, um, too many hands in the honey pot. It was just, they didn't know where to go. And plus, right. like I said, who was asking for it? No one. Right. Was. Donald Glover, again, did a, you, you touched on it, he did a great job as Lando. He embodied Lando. Oh, yeah. You know, he, or Billy D. He, he, he oh, definitely, yeah. he channeled him and did a great job with him. I mean, the mannerisms and everything, fantastically well. Um, great scene. It was great scene how Han and Chewie met. I'll give him that. Yeah. Um, and then, nobody asked for this film, but then they set you up at the very end for, the, for like, you know, a character we just spoke about. Maul again. Darth Maul. Just give me the guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, they keep teasing him with all these cool things. And unfortunately, you know, Solo being the first Star Wars flop, we'll never get to see the continuation of that. Yeah. Now, so just all of those reasons, again, is why it's my number eight uh, on the list. And Well, just, let's hope we get him in, in, in uh, Obi-Wan series. That's what I'm hoping for. That's, now, there we go. Hope he could be redeemed. Oh, yeah. Hopefully so. Uh, for me, it's uh, ours are just kind of flipped our last place votes because, you know, mine was Solo and that was your number eight. Mine is a Phantom Menace uh, at eight. Um, I agree with everything you said, Jar Jar no good um the midichlorian thing was a little odd uh, it's a little slow the pod racing seed awesome uh i'm gonna give this a leg up over the other films strictly due to duel of the fates the end of this film um i know you mentioned boring you come out that was the adrenaline rush i was waiting for it is awesome the music's fantastic we see obi-wan we see uh qui-gon jinn against darth maul and up to that point we had never even come close to seeing a lightsaber duel quite like that, the spectacle of it, the moves, the fast action, the power and the strategery of, um, to, to get in my George Bush, my strategery of, uh, you know, to see a character be able to handle Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon with a dual lightsaber, which was badass. And so I remember being, you know, in elementary school and just being like, this is so awesome. Um, so for me, you know, not horrible, uh, Queen Amidala, one of my first crushes ever, Natalie Portman, all at me. Uh, it was, I mean, it was fine. Um, obviously, compared to some of the others, it's a big step down from those. But for me, it isn't horrible. The Duel of the Fates is one of the greatest scenes in uh, the history of Star Wars. And it's long enough. It's a pretty drawn out scene. Um, so it at least saves it a little bit for me. Yeah. But I do agree with everything you said. So um, we're going to keep this thing moving into number seven. Who you got? Return of the Jedi. I'm just putting it out there, no prefacing at all. Return of the Jedi is number seven for me. Um, I love this movie, obviously. It, it, it was the bookend to a fantastic trilogy of films, Star Wars Empire, and then, you know, our New Hope Empire and Return of the Jedi. Um, obviously, the beginning is fantastic. Jabba and, ha you know, being seeing him. At that point in time, that was our first introduction before they went back and redid and, and put right. him into A New Hope. So that's your right. first time ever seeing Jabba, so that was really cool. 
uh, to be able to actually be introduced to that character. All of the stuff at the beginning, saving him, Jabba's barge, the the the, the Sarlacc pit, you know, right. on Tatooine. Uh, there, yeah. that was great, fantastic battle. That is all, all good. You know, um, Luke finding out that Leia's his sister, really great. That's re the redemption of Vader. But as soon as the Ewoks come into play, as soon as the Ewoks come into play, it that movie drops so many points for me. I don't know why it <laughs> is. I mean, even as a kid, and you know, I guess they were supposed to be a little bit more whatever. I don't know. There's definitely a lighter film than Empire for sure. Maybe that's what they were trying to introduce him for. Probably just to sell some toys. But I, I just... They just took me out of it. Uh, they really did. So anytime you flash out of Endor and give me some Death Star scenes or so in Lando, uh, you know, in the in the uh, battleship, uh, the space battles, the Falcon, space battles going on, all great stuff. But uh, the Endor stuff, man, with them fighting the, the with, with sticks, <laughs> fighting stormtroopers and all of that, with the sticks of the adats, uh, takes me out of it, and that is why it's number seven. Fair enough, everyone. Bye. Lee, some Ewok stuff. Let's do this. Uh, completely understand for me. I'm going to keep it in that trilogy for my seven. It is uh, a new hope. Uh, I know some people want to punch me when I was saying that, but for me, um, up to that point, I had seen it obviously not in theaters. I saw it at home. Um, yeah, the effects are just not to up to par of what I had seen up to that point in movies. So for me, it took me out of it quite a bit. I mean, that's like the lightsaber battle between Obi-Wan and Vader is, uh, looks like it was done in a nursing home. Uh, and especially when you go back now, coming off of the, the Rogue One scene of Vader, and then to see that, it's like, what? Like, would he get, get a cramp or something like in between the two fights? Like, I don't know what's going on. But uh, for me, it's just very slow. Um, the world building's fantastic. You get introduced to so many characters that we now love that are legends. Um, which is why it's as high as it is, uh, but just it's it's too slow moving for me, especially effects wise. It's just not up to the same speed as like the newer stuff and, and even it. even Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So for that reason alone, that's why it is number seven in my uh, opinion. I get it, man. I so get now it. we're getting up to the top half of our list, uh, coming in at number six. Who is on your list? For me, it is Rise of Skywalker. This could have and should have been a fantastic film. You know, um, in wrapping up 40 years or so of the Skywalker saga, um, unfortunately, as opposed to concentrating on being the best film it can be, to me, it's wrapping up, spending a lot of time wrapping up and doing a lot of course correction last year. I think the biggest mistake these guys made is not giving a, a one filmmaker a true vision of how to run that trilogy you know you say what you will about george lucas and his directing ability but he had a vision and he saw that vision through. yeah it all it all was parallel so you it didn't you really weren't all was. over the place yeah yeah um so for me that's why you know it, it rates this low on my list i guess um of course it was great to see darth sidious uh, you know palpatine it was great to see him but then again his presence just answers brings up a lot more questions uh that didn't make a lot of sense you know where he'd been all these years where did the secret army come from uh that he's got that's rising up through the ice you know just all of these things that are just like what um and then finn he's trying to always tell uh, Ray something and it's just a lot of things that you're just like what is why what yeah, you know yeah. um, great great again this movie though did a, got to see Han one more time that was good uh, this movie definitely wasn't like the other ones where it was boring you know but, but it also if you really look at it and, and for what it's supposed to be yeah just didn't live up to the expectations Fair enough. Uh, I'm going to keep it right there in the same trilogy. I'm going Force Awakens first uh, at number uh, six for, for myself. Uh, absolutely loved it. New film. Uh, Star Wars was back. It felt like a Star Wars film when I watched it. Definitely a big improvement from you know coming off of the prequels. Um, as far as a whole, I uh, love Ray, love Finn, love Poe, um, Kylo, fantastic. Um, Seeing Han Solo again and Chewie, I mean, when they jump back into Millennium Falcon, who didn't get freaking goosebumps and get super pumped yeah. for that? Um, the cliffhanger at the end of seeing Luke on the cliff, even though it's for five seconds, you're just like, whoa, like you come out of the theater just so excited. 
Um, it was a fun movie. I mean, that thing from start to finish was so much fun. So many homages to the original trilogy. You just felt like you were back home in the Star Wars land. So um, I absolutely love this film. J.J. Abrams, I'm a huge fan of him and, you know, what he does with films, whether it's been Star Trek or these or any of his other films. Um, and I just love the direction that it was going. Um, going in eight, and I agree 100%, if, if, if he would have been able to see his vision out through the whole trilogy, I think it'd be right there with the original trilogy. I mean, um, uh, maybe not yeah. that, but it'd be right there. So, um, yeah. you know, it's going to be a what if always. But for me, I love Force Awakens. And uh, if you haven't seen it, it's a blast. It's, <laughs> it's good. So uh, we're moving to top five now. Uh, who is that number five slot for you? Well, your film was a great segue for me to talk about the same <laughs> film. Uh, <laughs> like it's, uh, you know, like you said, great job of bridging the story with these new characters, great introduction of Poe, Ray, Finn, Kylo even, you know, um, finding out that Kylo was Leia's son, Han and Leia's son. That's great. I did not, I don't believe I knew that going into I it. Did, so no, that, I didn't, no. I didn't either. That was a nice, huge, big reveal for me. Um, that I loved, and you don't get a lot of that these days in, in films. You yeah, know? I mean, everything like is a true spoiled. reveal. Yeah, you know, so that was really surprising to me. Um, name, and he's named after Ben, you know, nice little shout out to little Obi Wan there. Um, it, was, it, it was an exciting story and really brought back to me what Star Wars was always supposed to be. You yeah, know, I talked a lot about how I was disappointed with that original trilogy because I just didn't walk out and want to be that Jedi Knight or this wash buckler you know or some yep. other guy or like han um but i walked out of here feeling pretty pretty amped up you know <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. i really did um it, it brought it back to what star wars was supposed to be i hate that han dies and we never get a scene you know as long as you guys are listening to this you're always if we ever talk about star wars and what could have been for me it's not being able to see the last group and we never will now yeah. you know carrie's passed away um but you know seeing the the actual characters portraying these these characters or yeah uh, actual on luke and leia yeah together. The characters together would have been so fantastic so we never get that um so that's a big downside for me that we never got to see that that just goes across the, that whole last part of the trilogy right um, but yeah force awakens other than that stuff i mean it was just really really very exciting yeah and i too it's very funny there's a lot of good yeah. humor in it like finn's very funny and han's on <laughs> you know yeah. so for me, I'm going to piggyback off of your last one. So my number five is uh, uh, something is going to slap some people in the face, and uh, that's Empire Strikes Back. I know this is uh, a lot of people's favorite. Fall my chair. I know, I know it's a lot of people's favorites. It's rightfully so. I love this movie. I love it. I love it. I love it. So what I like about it the most is it turns everything on its head, especially up to that point. We're used to good guys fight bad guys. Bad guys sometimes might do okay, but the good guys win. End of story. This movie turns that on its head. Bad guys kick ass the entire time. Um, it's funny, actually, when I saw Infinity War, I thought of Empire Strikes Back because it's kind of the same thing. I mean, it's like they just get waxed the whole time. Um, Darth Vader's so good. Um, you know, he's why he's such a legend is because of Empire, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, we just see the good guys just lose over and over and over again. And I love that. Uh, for me, it just comes down to the effects and the, the, the time period that it was shot. Again, it's not horrible. It was actually ground setting at that point in time. But for me, by the time I had watched it at the age I was, I had seen so many films that had awesome special effects. So for me, it was like going backwards and it just took me out of it. So I will also preference, I knew Luke and Vader, their relationship at that time. So before I got, I didn't get a big reveal by I'm your father. I already knew that. So my dad ruined that for me <laughs> on accident and I will never forgive him for it. I was like, as devastating as finding out Santa Claus. Uh, right. So, um, yeah, but for me, that's why it just not up there. I completely understand if why it's people's favorite. I really do. I, if I could go back in time and see a movie when it first came out, it would have been empire because I would have loved feeling, the rush I know I would have felt watching it for the first time in a theater, not knowing any of this, you know what I mean? I yeah. think it would have been great. So uh, for me, that's why it's my number five. And I know some people are like, oh my God. Let me ask you a quick question. Yes. So when you saw these films, mm. I'm curious to know is, because these were redone. Yeah. Special effects wise. Were these the yeah. re-releases that came out in the late 90s? 
that you when you saw these for the I first time? I think so. It was like the first time. It was like whatever the first edits were, where like uh, Jabba was in uh, A New Hope. Or, yep, A New it's, Hope. It's and the, all that. It was those. It was those. When yes. they re released them in the theaters in the late right. 90s, they had added all those new scenes and right. boosted up the special effects. That's why I was curious to know what you, how you felt about it. And wow, yeah. that was even with the spruced up effects. You yeah, a little bit, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. and it's not, they were still good, just compared to, yeah. you know, when you've seen Phantom Menace and like those effects are like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? It's a whole song. True. Um, but yeah, so for me, that is where it is. And uh, we're gonna move on to number four. Who is your number four slot? It is A New Hope. It's uh, number four for me, and it rates up there a little bit higher because, like I said, I saw it in- introduce this fantastic world of characters to me um, that have stood the test of time. Um, you're, you, the world building that it did, you're going to be really hard pressed to find someone out there at the time who may not have ever seen the movie, but they were going to know who Vader, Luke, they're going to recognize yep. C3PO yes. or 2 d 2 You might not have ever seen the film. But these movies were so huge and, again, catapulted them into pop culture that you're going to know just by seeing the character. You know what I right. mean? Who they are. Who they are. So, you know, uh, that's to me is why it's number four. You said a lot about it earlier. I don't want to recap everything you said. But, uh, you know, there's awesome negatives, of course, that, that the, the battle between Ben and, and, and Vader is pretty sad. Or Obi-Wan and Vader is pretty, 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 pretty sad. Uh, <laughs> You know, but there, uh, there is great things about it. Um, introduction of Obi Wan and and Ben, and you know how he's led Luke to believe that it, that is who his father is, that his father's dead, and just all these cool seeds that it planted for the next films. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's why it's number four for me. Where fair enough for me. Um, for me, it is Rise of Skywalker. Um, a little higher than what you had it for. Um, I agree. It's not a perfect movie. It honestly, it should be number one or number two. If I think it could have been, you know, if yeah. things were going right. But as you mentioned, too, a lot of retconning had to get done. Uh, unfortunately, um, the Last Jedi pulls Rise of Skywalker down because they went so left wing with things. Um, JJ had to pull it back to the way you know. I think everybody kind of wanted it to go um, in you know, seeing Luke and fixing him and, you know, just, just everything. It, it, it was a lot that needed to be retconned, but for me still, it was incredible. I'm a sucker for the end of the story. Um, to me, Kylo and Ray, like those were the two best performances that those actors gave to their, uh, to their characters for sure. Uh, they were fantastic. Um, to see Palpatine come back was fantastic. And there's just so many Easter eggs and fun little moments that make you, you know, yeah. ooh and ah, and like, oh, like when Han Solo showed up, I, I mean, there were just gasps everywhere in the theater. It was absolutely fantastic. And then, you know, see Lando come back was great. Uh, Chewie getting his medal, finally. Uh, you know, it was just, it was so much fun. And again, it's it, it, like Force Awakens. It's so much fun. Uh, to me, it, you, it gets sucked right into the Star Wars universe. Uh, universe. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just, it, it sticks to landing. It's not a perfect 10, but uh, it sticks to landing. And for that, in the scale of it, you know, the battle of the end and all the ships and all the plan, it just was so fun. And uh, because of the Easter eggs and getting to see more of what the story was meant to be, I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So uh, for me, mm-hmm. that is where it is. And we're going to move into the top three. Uh, your number three spot is revenge of the sith me it too is. hey okay well let's just talk about it man because this is what i wanted that whole trilogy to be you yes. know it was dark it was exciting you know hayden actually came into his own he did a much better job i think of portraying anakin and his transformation into um, uh vader uh darth sidious you know aka chief palpatine he finally makes his plans yeah. known you know everything yeah. finally starts to come together uh, the first time, our first time seeing Luke and Leia as babies, uh, see their birth, the tragedy of what happens to Padme. You know, it's just a just a great movie. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, you know, we've we've commented a couple times, I believe, how these lightsaber battles at the end. I mean, the battles at the end usually 
the movie could be really boring, yeah. but they they do redeem it at the end. But yeah. this one was just went above and beyond for me. You know, yeah. um, you know, once again, you is the standout. Uh, oh yeah, as portraying a uh, Obi Wan, the anguish he's showing while he's battling Anakin. You know, and, and knowing what he's got to do. You know, I've got the high ground. Don't yeah. do it. You know, don't do it, Anakin. Uh, but, yeah. You know, just all of that, man. That movie to me, I, it's such a letdown that we had to plod through six years yeah. of Earth. <laughs> So I think that's what it was, six years before we got to that. Is that right? Yeah, three. Yep. Yeah. yeah, three, three. Um, yep. Yeah, because at that, that time it was three years between each film. And we had to wait six years to get that. Oh, wait much longer, obviously, uh, you know, but then six years from the first film to get there. And I was so happy when we did because it was great. It was awesome. Yeah, they, uh, they nailed it on this one. I don't know what light bulb went <clears> off, but man, they upped the tone to what I wanted it. The, the whole um, the story of seeing <clears> Anakin and really portraying it as a tragedy really more so than him just turning into a bad guy and just saying screw this like he's trying to save his wife he's trying to save his kids and you know he goes down a path that he hates himself for you know we see him kill younglings for crying out loud we see him literally like staring and you know having tears come down his eyes because he realizes what he's you know the monster he's become and he's doing it because he thinks he's saving the one thing he can't live without and it turns into a tragedy and then it, you know, foreshadows, you know, why he is the way he is with Darth Vader. But, yeah. um, you know, they stuck the landing. The the fight at the end is so good between Obi-Wan and him. Uh, again, really like brothers. Uh, and I thought um, Obi-Wan really was portrayed perfectly in those moments. You know, I have the high ground. Please don't do this. You know, he is trying everything he can to save his friend to even though all the bad things he has done to pull him back to the light and forgive him and just try to save his, his brother. And uh, it just doesn't happen. And, uh, but it's, it's a gr great film. Uh, I remember, you know, seeing him being like, Oh, this is a lot better than what, I, this is what I'm talking about. Like yeah. it, it's, it's so good. So for me uh, and you number three, uh, which leads us right into the runner up, the silver medalist. And uh, I think we're going to be probably eye to eye on this one too. Uh, who is your number two? It's uh, Rogue One. Yep, me too. Again, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, this is the, this is the surprise of the list. I think for I would I would say it's if you would have told me that this would be number two, you know, who yes. would have thought? No, it was fantastic, man. Yes, it was. And, and it's uh, you know, <clears throat> he Gareth I was the director did a fantastic job. You care more about the characters that are introduced. You know, um, what was it? Uh, well, Lucy Jones, I believe, played Jen Erso, Diego Luna as Cassian uh, Andor. I think that yep, was K two S O. Yeah, K two S O, voiced by Alan Tudyk, as you guys I know. Love him. He's I love a fantastic him. genre actor. You know, known for Firefly, yes, Dollhouse, um, Mr. Nobody on Doom Patrol. Steve the Pirate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Steve the Pirate, and uh, was that um. Uh, Dodgeball. Dodgeball. Thank you. I was doing. <laughs> uh, yeah, dodgeball. Yeah. So he's just a great guy, uh, great actor, great genre actor, and and he did. You know, hearing him do K two S O was awesome. Great things all around. Um, and you just, it's like the Dirty Dozen. You know, or, or oh, it's great. It's it's you, these guys don't make it, but <clears throat> you care about these. They have one film to care about. And I think you there's so much character development, and you care about these guys way more than some of the characters in in the, oh, yeah. all, of the, all of the other trilogies, you know what I mean? Where yeah. you've actually had three films to kind of see them develop and, and care about these guys. You, you in one film, cared about just as much, if not more, than the other characters that were introduced in the other films. And you yeah. talked about this when you talked about uh, New Hope, Vader's freaking battle scene, dude. At oh. the end. Even when it was two minutes or whatever, but that- Greatest and, scene in history of Star Wars by It really while. is, dude. It's so surprising, because, you know, I, I don't even think, Maybe I did just a little bit beforehand, but at one point this was supposed to be a Star Wars film that had no characters whatsoever that we'd ever seen before. Right. Right. Um, and then and that scene was, was actually shot at the very end. They just decided yeah. we're going to throw this in, and what a great decision because, I mean, we see it's really the first time we see Vader like full, yeah. just ramp like just rage mode, you know, and it it, it, it well, brings him up even higher. And what I like too is. They used him just enough because once he's on screen, that's like all you want to see. But they use him very yes. specifically and they use it perfect. The, you know, when a door comes up and the silhouette's there, you know, you're just like, oh, my gosh, it, it's it's just so awesome. Uh, and as you mentioned, the dirty dozen, you know, everybody dies. So yeah. 
you know, it's, it's so unique and different. And to me, it makes New Hope, oh, you know, much better because you see, you know, watching New Hope after you've seen Rogue One, what people went through to get those plans for this plan to go in fruition. Um, so really, I mean, just on that alone, it's incredible. I mean, the stakes were so epic in, you know, the, the sacrifice that so many people made to get those plans it was, yeah. it was crazy. Yeah, and I just love the fact that way they it took you right to the beginning. Yes, I mean right there. You you get Leia getting the plans handed to her at the yeah. end of Rogue One, and then New Hope kicks off with that ship. I mean, you know, you know, at the yeah. end of Rogue One, Vader's after that ship. He sees it. He knows where he's got uh, yeah. to go, and that's how New Hope starts. So yeah. they just did a lot of that was stuff was so surprising because I don't think I knew the amount of time, and, and he wasn't in there a lot. But I don't even know if I knew he was going to be in there even a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Then how to know how it took you right there to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, right there. It was just yeah. really just a great, great film. And surprise yeah. that it's number two on both of our lists. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can you can have him direct any Star Wars film after that. I mean, yeah, yeah that's you know, his style. Like I'm, I'm 100 on board. So uh, we're actually for once we're gonna have different number ones. We usually eye to eye, uh, but uh, obviously you know based off of elimination. You have Empire Strikes Back. I have Return of the Jedi as yeah. our number one, which is cool because they both get love and they're usually the big two that most people talk about, you know, in yeah. some form or fashion is these two. So um, why was Empire your number one? A lot of the reasons you already said, um, you know, from the beginning to end and this point in time, and there's been movies that have done it since, but in this point in time, you know, the good guys always win. You know, they might get knocked down. They're always going to get back up before those credits roll. You know, yeah. <laughs> and, and this one they didn't. The betrayal that Han, you know, well, just they, they, they get kicked out of Hoth. They're running from Hoth. They're trying to the the, the light speed, uh, the, the hyperdrive never works the whole always time. Broke. You know, <laughs> always broken. They um, the Han. I was surprised to me when Han gets to uh, Cloud City, and they're walking towards the dinner, and they open the door, big reveal, and Vader's sitting there with Boba Fett. You're like, what? You know, it's just like, I, really, it was all shocking stuff. You know, when the, when the movie ends, Luke's got his hand cut off and, and Han's in carbonite. And you're like, that's the end? Credits are rolling? You know, <laughs> you, you, I just couldn't believe that's the way the movie ended as a kid. Um, yeah. And I was not uh, aware that yeah. Luke I'm was sure. Vader's son or then beta was i'm sure that was nuts i had no idea so that was a big huge reveal too i i, I saw this movie in the theater i don't even know how many times and oh i'm sure my cousins and i went all the time it was so good um but yeah and, and it stuck out to me it's not just number one in this trilogy or i'm sorry in this whole star wars saga and you hear a lot of people talk about it empire is usually just their number one favorite film of all time for yeah. a lot of the reasons that both you and i have already oh yeah definitely i mean i completely understand like i said i if i can go back in time i wish I wouldn't have known, and I wish that's the one movie. I think it would be so much higher on my all-time list, too. Uh, mine's Return of the Jedi. Um, I don't mind Ewoks, so I guess I should start there. Um, again, I love the ending of a story. I love seeing uh, the pool of Darth Vader going good and bad. Uh, for me, that was the reveal and kind of the shock that you got from Empire was, you know, when he shows up, or Luke shows up, you know, they're having that conversation. And, you know, he's calling him father and you can kind of see him holding Luke's lightsaber. And uh, you think, oh, he's going to he's gonna be good. Like, they're going to team up right here. And, you know, he hands him over to the stormtroopers. And you're like, oh, well, like, damn. And then he gets up there. And you're like, well, maybe it's a setup. And, you know, yeah. then all of a sudden they're lightsaber battling. And you're like, okay, like, I thought he was going to go good again. And then I finally see him go good. And, uh, you know. Let the prophecy come true. He brings balance to the force, throws the emperor over. Uh, yeah. It was so rewarding. And to see, you know, the kind of father-son aspect of ultimately family, you know, one throughout in his bond with his son. Uh, he gets, you know, he, he lives up to the Anakin Skywalker that uh, everybody was hoping he would end up being. So um, I love the story, as you meant, before Endor, especially like the movie gets off to a great start, like all the way through, mm -hmm. um, you know, seeing... Boba Fett and, and Jabba and that whole ordeal and seeing Han get rescued. And uh, they just did a great job. Uh, seeing Lando get in the mix some was, was cool. So we get a, a, a healthy mix of all the characters that I love 
Um, and uh, I just love Return of the Jedi. It's it's one of my favorite films of all time, as is Empire. They're both up there for me. Um, so that's why it's my number one. But more importantly, we want to know what you guys' uh, ranking is for the Star Wars franchise. Who is your favorite uh, Star Wars movie? Uh, who's your least favorite? We'd be happy to know. Uh, please hit that subscribe, subscribe button, leave a comment, let us know what you think. And uh, hopefully we can talk about a lot more things Star Wars. Uh, if you get a chance, please check out our website, www.comiccollectorsguild.com. Uh, we'd love to take a look at your collection, talk geek culture with you guys. And uh, we cannot wait to talk more things with you all. Lee, uh, I really appreciate you taking some time to rank your Star Wars films. It's always a blast to talk about the galaxy far, far away. And uh, I appreciate it, sir. Same here, man. Always enjoy talking to you. Cool, man. Well, you guys, uh, check out the Comic Collectors Guild. Stay hunting. And uh, may the force be with you guys always.